Well, hey, everybody. Welcome into this Adobe Photoshop tutorial brought to you, as always, by tutvid.com. If you're new around here, my name is Nathaniel Dodson, and today we're going to do a fast five-minute guide to retouching a photo. This is going to apply to pretty much any photo you take into Photoshop. You can take or leave the bits that you like or don't like. This is a five-minute guide to retouching a photo in Photoshop. Let's jump in and get started right now. All right, well, step number one is getting started with our photo, and I've got a raw photo here. It's a .dng file. Double-click to open it up in Camera Raw. And the very first thing I like to do is just general color correction and uh, setting color temperature here in Camera Raw. So I'll probably reduce my white balance a little bit, just blew the image up a little bit, and maybe add a little purple as well. I might eh, shift the exposure a little bit. I think I'll just drop the contrast a little bit, maybe about negative 30. I'll drop my highlights a little bit as well. I will boost the shadows. I'm looking to just overall reduce contrast to give me a lot to work with in Photoshop. I will drop a little kick back into the blacks though, and then maybe I'll punch a little clarity into it as well. Very subtly. I'm going to come over to the detail tab and I'm going to pour a little bit of sharpening in there, just some base sharpening to get us started. I'm not going to mess around too much with radius detail masking. We'll get to that stuff later. Then here in lens correction, I'll do a quick remove chromatic aberration and enable the profile corrections for this particular photo, really for this camera slash lens. And then before we head into Photoshop, I'm going to hit the little link at the bottom of the dialog box. And I want to make sure that I'm working with a 16 bits per channel image. And I'll probably open it in Photoshop as a smart object. That's just generally how I work with my photos. And then hit open object to bring it into Photoshop. Now, the overall step two that I like to do is any pixel pushing type of adjustments or edits here. In this case, I'm going to mess around with liquify and just tweak her face a little bit, maybe her shoulders a touch as well. Uh, there's the face aware liquify tools, which are really helpful. And because we're using a smart object, we can always go back and edit this liquify if we decide we need to later. Now, overall, step number three is to retouch the features of the model. We're going to retouch her eyes first, but we're also going to hit the eyebrows, do some frequency separation for her hair and skin, uh, and just attack any other blemishes that we want to get rid of on her skin. I'm going to retouch the eyes by applying two curves adjustment layers, one set to color dodge to brighten, one set to color burn to darken, and I'll just darken and brighten the parts of her eyes that I want to darken and brighten, and then reduce opacity on those, uh, on those adjustment layers until it looks just right. To thicken and darken the eyebrows, I'm just creating another curves adjustment layer, setting it to the blend mode of overlay, and then painting in above the eyebrows in that mask with white uh, to reveal some of that darkening, and then I just reduce the opacity to about 40%. Now, the frequency separation skin retouching we're going to do by merging all of our layers to a new layer using Command, Option, Shift, and the letter E. That's Control, Alt, Shift, E on the PC. And we'll duplicate that layer, name the top layer high, name the bottom layer low. I'm going to blur the bottom layer six or eight pixels with a Gaussian blur. It just depends on how big or small your image is. I'm just trying to blur to get rid of any noticeable sharp crisp detail on uh, this layer. Then I'm going to select the high image, go image, apply image, and I want to apply the low layer, set the channel to RGB. Because this is a 16-bit image we're working with, I'm going to tick on invert, and I'm going to use the blending mode add, and then I'm going to set my scale to 2 and offset to 0. If I was using an 8-bit image, I would use the blending mode subtract, set the scale to 2, and the offset to 128, and I would not check on invert. But this is the way that I'm going to do it because this is a 16-bit image. Then I'm going to set that high layer to the blend mode of linear light. Now I'm going to use the healing brush, not the spot healing brush, the regular healing brush set to sample just the current layer and anything that's sort of like a pimple or a pockmark or a small wrinkle, a very detail-oriented blemish, I'm going to remove that on the high layer. Things that are larger tonal changes, like if a shadow is too intense or there's a weird, bizarre shadow showing up, I'm going to either use my healing brush or a paint brush and sample skin tones around the dark or light area and paint at a very low opacity, like 10% opacity on the low layer. Think of the low layer as the color changing layer, the high layer as the detail and sharpness changing layer. Also, a cool trick to remove a decent amount of flyaway hair is to paint with 50% gray. So set your fill color to 50% gray. Use your paintbrush tool. Paint on the high layer. Just paint over those stray hairs. And for the most part, they'll go away perfectly. Every once in a while, you're going to have to dip down to the low layer and use clone stamp and clone stamp over uh, the area where the hair was just to replace that color and really sell the effect. And a quick little trick to build out and thicken hair, especially in areas that are a little thin, create a new layer, use your clone stamp tool. I created this little custom hair brush. You can probably find one for free online and use the clone stamp tool and just stroke and dab up all around the edges to build out and thicken up the hair where it needs to be thickened up. And now overall step number four is going to be dodge and burn. And here I just create a new layer, 
Use the fill uh, command under edit fill to choose to fill it with 50% gray. Set the layer to overlay. Use the dodge and burn tools to run over. I like to stay kind of zoomed out and just have an overall look at my image as I dodge and burn. Sometimes I zoom in and focus on some details, but I like to get, you know, sort of a drink in the whole picture. And then after I do my burning, I switch over and knock out the dodging. And then I like to duplicate the layer. And well, first I set the layer back to the blend mode of soft light. And then I duplicate the layer, command or control J. And the new layer, I'll typically reduce to about 50% opacity, and then the original layer, the one that we duplicated from, I'll apply about a 10 pixel Gaussian blur, 10 or 15 pixels to that layer. And overall step number five and the final step is going to be changing color, changing or, or adding atmosphere, doing sharpening and adding some finishing grain. So I'm going to paste in a bunch of adjustment layers here as well as a little light flare. I'm using stuff like the color lookup table to add really cool prepackaged effects. Again, utilize that opacity slider to get exactly how much of the effect you want. I'm using curves as well and going in and adjusting, uh, brightening, pulling the black point up and adjusting shadows and things like that. Uh, I'm using another color lookup table to change the color of the background, make it a little bit more blue teal. I think it's got a nice healthy contrast with the red yellow in her skin. The flare is just the paintbrush, a huge paintbrush, dabbed a little orange in there and set it to the blend mode of screen. And I also merged all of the layers up to a new layer, command shift option E on the PC, that's control shift alt E. And then I take that layer into camera raw, use a nice sharpening engine they have in there, apply some sharpening, then duplicate that layer, convert it to a black and white layer, apply some high pass sharpening and set that layer to the soft light blend mode. And then I throw some grain on top of it all, just using a 50% gray layer and again, applying grain using camera raw and then just reduce the opacity until it looks good. And the last thing I think I wanna do is change the overall toning of this just a little bit more. So I'm gonna paste in a few more adjustment layers and we can quickly take a look at a before and after, how the image looked, the raw file coming into Photoshop and what we've got now. So there you have it. You can see there's a whole series of steps in there and a whole bunch of other things. If there's any particular tip or technique or trick in there that you really liked and you want me to expound upon and do in more detail, let me know. I'm going to be looking to create a series of tutorials kind of based on this tutorial covering all these different techniques and things like that. But if there's one that you particularly like, you want to see sooner, let me know by dropping a comment down below and I'll make sure that I get on that tutorial first. So for retouching a portrait in Photoshop using adjustment layers, masking, sharpening, tonal adjustments, LUTs, just everything we did in this Photoshop tutorial, ladies and gentlemen, that's it. Get it, got it, good. Nathaniel Dodson, tutvid.com. I'll catch you in the next one. And before you go, make sure you subscribe to my channel for more great tutorials every day. Also, buy my course. It helps us do what we do, and this channel is supported by viewers just like you. You can also just click the thumbnail and watch another video from this channel. See you next time, guys.